And I'm out here openly showing the shape of my breasts in pretty much every piece of content that I publish on the internet. What can I say? I'm the woman of my dreams. Welcome. Ah, I don't want to clap though. I have an itch on my nose. Wow, wow, wow. False star. Hello and welcome back, you beautiful nerds, to another edition of a video. Yep, on this channel right there. This video today is sponsored by ThreadUp and I'm so excited to talk to you about ThreadUp. I will be using them in an experiment later in the video. We're talking about fashion. We're talking about lots of things, mainly boobs, breasts. Mm. If you haven't already, please like and subscribe because um, I, what, what, I don't know why. Does it really matter? It really doesn't matter in the grand scheme of things if you don't like and subscribe, but it would be nice. Today, we're doing it. We're tackling an issue that has been on my noggin. Ooh, I can't do that. That's Bailey Sarian's thing. <laughs> do you guys watch Bailey Sarian? She's like my new obsession. Her murder, makeup, mystery Mondays. Ooh, wait, bitch. I'm obsessed. Another thing I'm obsessed with, living sans tit straps. Ooh, hoo, hoo. no milky truck booby breast holders for me, my guy. Not since late March, 2020. See, I've always been the kind of gal who's had like a laissez-faire relationship with her little novels. Don't get me wrong. I'm, I'm, I appreciate my breasts. I, I love them. I love my little teeters. I, I mean, I'm glad you gals are here. They're real stand-up gals, real reliable. I'm also super lucky because my breasts weren't ruined for me by the male gaze at a super young age, like a lot of my friends. Like I have a lot of girlfriends whose bosoms blossomed in puberty and they very quickly got annoyed with how much attention, both good and bad, it brought their way. I remember my best friend, we must've been in like 10th grade, wore this like long sleeve, tight, but long sleeve shirt to school one day. And she was called to the principal's office because it showed too much of the shape, specifically the shape of her breasts. And they made her wear this oversized lime green t-shirt the rest of the day. And she was wearing a bra too. I cannot stress this enough. She was wearing a bra and it was a long sleeve, just tight shirt. The school made a comment on her breasts that she still processing as an adult to this day. You know, just some casual fashion trauma for a 16 year old on a Tuesday afternoon, nothing new here. The thing about that story, however, is that I was also wearing a tight long sleeve shirt to school that day. I know this because we had uniforms at our school, so any day that we got to eschew the dress code was an event. I have every outfit that I wore to high school on non-uniform days emblazoned in my brain because it was such a big deal, so I remember. A message was sent to both me and my friend on that day. One, that her breasts were too much, too distracting, too sexual, too fill in the blank. My breasts were Christian. <laughs> like little Christian chachas. Cut to today. Bitch, I'm in my 30s. I'm a semi-functional. Pussy tight. Credit score is high. My babies are well fed. And I'm out here openly showing the shape of my breasts in pretty much every piece of content that I publish on the internet. What can I say? I'm the woman of my dreams. I don't get demonetized for not wearing a bra. And for that, I am very lucky. But I'm a woman, a woman with curves. And I experience that same kind of tightening of the guidelines as soon as we tilt the camera down to this ass. <laughs> Ooh, I wore some booty shorts too. Currently, I am in a core with TikTok, you might have heard of them, a dance app, because every video of me pole dancing that I place on their platform gets flagged and removed. If I show so much as a shadow of a cheek in one of my videos, boop, flag goes up, I get fired from the app. It's utterly stupid. And I know I have it super easy because there are a lot of women who get shadow banned on the internet simply for just existing on the internet. Oh my God, hi Karen. <laughs> Introduce yourself to me and to the rest of the world. I'm a plus size dancer. I am 24 years old right now living in Mexico. How has the pandemic, you know, being at home all the time and having to really rely on social media, how has that shaped the way you see yourself online and the way you see your body online? At some point there was this pressure, not just to dance good, but to look really good. I tried to post a picture of myself wearing mom jeans. I'm showing a bit of, of my breasts and everything. It was like the first time that I decided, okay, I'm wearing vibrant colors and I'm feeling myself and I have heels on me and I have makeup and, and, and then Instagram, it removed it like within 15 minutes. I would have loved to see a lot of plus size dancers, maybe not plus size, but with bigger boobs because I was like, yeah, I mean, those uh, customs are not done for someone with plus size and big breasts. 
Now, I know that I'm speaking with a lot of small teat privilege, but bitch, I wish we could live in a world where our tatty bojangles could just swing low and free and bounce and just be out and about in life like the rest of us are. I wish that we lived in a world where I didn't feel the need to apologize when it gets nipply outside and my little puppies stand at attention. But most importantly, I wish we lived in a world where we didn't have social media algorithms dictating how much skin is appropriate to show online. And because even though some of us have been flying free at home, our social media presence has only really escalated in the past year. Our online life and our analog life is becoming the same. And with more time spent online, that means we're providing more information for these algorithms to compare and contrast. Like every video, picture, piece of content that we post on whatever platform, these little algorithms in the back end are just going like <laughs> her breasts knock at a frequency that is acceptable. Her breasts are too bodacious and present. They break the fourth wall. Fail. The other day I was on Instagram and I saw a friend of mine post a bunch of pictures of her breastfeeding her son. And she had to put like little emojis and icons on her shoulder boulders so that her pictures wouldn't get taken down. Never mind that her full nip is in her baby's mouth. We just see like the top of her breast and the infant's head. It's a tiggle bitty and it's out. Therefore, it must be censored with a cute little smiley face. One could even argue that all these hearts, stars, and horseshoes, clovers, and blue moons are just attracting more attention to the mammary gland in question. It really seems like the damaging messaging that I received about breasts and their size in high school has since migrated online. Like magically, like how could this have happened when we have so much verdant conversation? Ah, uh, right, 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 right. These social media algorithms were created predominantly by men. So of course they would inherently adopt the male gaze. Right, cool, 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 cool. What has been the feedback from your audience? Yeah, I was like super, super worried about everyone like, oh, she's got rolls. Oh, oh, look at her arm. Whenever I posted something like a little bit sexier or anything, some of the boys in my Instagram would comment something or send, if it was in my stories, um, they would send some emoji or something. My body and my breasts are whatever I want, however I want. I want to look however I want to look while I'm this. Here's what I'm thinking. I'm gonna run my own little breasticle test on Instagram. You see right now I have three categories of bras. I have the sports bra and bralette for when I'm feeling easy, breezy, beautiful. I have a push-up bra because someone told me in a Victoria's Secret back in 2004 that I should always wear a push-up bra because I'm an A cup. And then I have this new type of bra category that was advertised to me online. And bitch, it got me. Oh, she got me. Because they advertised that they are made specifically for small beans in mind. They promise no bra gap, no strap fallage. But to achieve this, my internet friends. I'm gonna need some good looks. Woo! Well, this is incredible news, gals, because this video is sponsored by Thread Up. Now, stop, stop, my internet friend. Before you click over this ad, I, I'm gonna say I, I put together some looks with my Thread Up haul. Am I good, bitch? I need a witness. Thread Up is not your typical thrift store. You can thrift your favorite women's and kids brands such as Topshop, Boohoo, Rag and Bone, and much more for up to 90% off the estimated retail. They have at least 40,000 brands with new arrivals literally every day, y'all. I did not make this up. Now, I did not know about Thread Up before I received the sponsorship, and my life has pretty much changed. You know I love a bargain, you know I love easy, and this is exactly that. This is like going to the mixture of like your local Goodwill to your local boutique thrift store, and not having to like pick through barrels of clothes that smell like your grandma's house. Like that's the only drawback for thrifting in my opinion, and you don't have to do that with Thread Up. You're gonna get an extra 30% off if you use my code Devin. This offer expires July 1st, 2021, so girl, you better get on it. And it only includes customers in the US and Canada, so do check their website for full details. Oh, oh, I have to show you my favorite part about Thread Up. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. These are my favorite little booties. I've worn them to like pieces, like they're, they're dead. She's dead, sorry, but you are. I found the same exact pair on Thread Up. Like, <laughs> my favorite. Okay, you know I'm a girl who likes a bottom line, so let's take a look at the prices for these hauls. This tube top from Topshop cost me $10. The romper, 34 bucks. The dress and the booties that are my fave, $67. This mistook t-shirt and the thigh-high boots, only $53. The Topshop long sleeve tee, only $12.99.
That feels like a sexy good deal to me, y'all. I'm going to be styling myself with two different looks, but supplementing these looks with three different bras. One that gives me a little schmear, one that gives me a little schmear, and one that gives me a little schmee. And then I'm gonna put them on my Instagram story, which if you don't follow me on Instagram, join me there. It's at Dev Lytle. I'm gonna put them on my Instagram story and I'm gonna ask women, only women, trans women too, y'all are women, get in the bus, we're here, let's go girls. Only women to rate on what picture they like best. And I'm not gonna say that I'm wearing different bras. I'm just gonna be like, here are three different pictures of one look, which one do you like best? I just want the female perspective of my shoulder boulders in those two different looks. Do we like the look with a fuller chest or not? And the reason why I want only ladies in the chat is because our breasts have been defined by the male gaze for so long. I just want a reflection of how the picture looks, not how it's supposed to make someone else feel. I my tits feel like they're in a brookstone right now. I'm pretty sure this bra is like memory foam. Like if you lie your head down on here, it's gonna be like the best snap you've ever had. Now, I really have to apologize if the way I talk about breasts feels a little too cavalier. That's not my intention. To be honest, I never really saw what the hype was all about when it came to titties. Not because I don't have big babs myself, because growing up, my mom didn't have breasts. For those of you who have followed me from BuzzFeed Ladylike, you'll know, because we made a lot of videos about it, that my mom had breast cancer. She was diagnosed with breast cancer when I was a baby, and she underwent a double mastectomy when I was about two. So, like, I never really equated breasts with womanhood. As a kid, I used to go with her to pick up her special bras and her prosthesis, but my only real interface with boobies growing up was when I grew mine, and my girlfriends around me grew theirs. It's weird now, as an adult, to even really process my relationship with breasts because it just feels, it all just feels very loaded. On the one hand, my mom has always been and will always be one of the most stunningly beautiful women I've ever encountered in my life. Look at this girl, look, look at her. Okay, model. And on the other hand, breasts play a very big role in society's standard of beauty. Where does that leave me? Luckily, I have Allie. Hi, Allie. Hi. I know you from Instagram. We've been chatting for a while, but not everyone else who's watching knows who you are. So do you mind introducing yourself just a little bit? My name is Allie. Um, I am killer left boob on Instagram. I am a 29 year old mother to cancer, survivor breast cancer. And I've had a double mastectomy way back when I got diagnosed. It hit me really hard. And I immediately started looking online for anyone that had posted anything about being a breast cancer survivor because I wanted to hear their stories. I didn't find a whole lot and then I decided just before my second round of chemotherapy that I was going to start an Instagram account so that other people that were going to go through this would see what it's like and know that like you're gonna get through it and this is how like this person did it you can do it. When I think about like my personal relationship with breasts it, it is like a, a love-hate relationship. I think that is a common thread for a lot of women and a lot of people who have breasts. Why do you think that this is a common sentiment amongst a lot of people that love-hate hot cold relationship? They're probably not going to be exactly what you want all the time. No and that's because of the standards that we have. I think that it's definitely from other people or, or what we think that other people mm -hmm. want to see. It's not the clothes that dictate whether I'm, you know, good enough, feminine enough, or sexy enough, anything like that. It's like all about what's on the inside. How did motherhood change your relationship? your breasts. When I had my daughter, my heart was absolutely set on breastfeeding. It finally came to a point where I was like, you know, like bed is truly best and my baby's going to be fine. Even if this didn't work out for me, like she's going to be okay. My mom had a double mastectomy when I was two. So I grew up with her talking about that decision when she chose her children and life over having breasts. What was that moment like for you, Allie? Once I was told I would need a mastectomy, I knew that reconstruction wasn't for me. When I knew I'd have to have one breast taken away, I didn't wanna be lopsided because I know that that's really hard too for a lot of women. So really the only choice was to go flat with a flat closure. I feel good. I feel really good about my decision. My husband has been completely supportive. That's the only backlash I've had is from people talking behind my back. I'll hear things about well, what's her husband think and it's like he's amazing. He doesn't care. I definitely have a booty and I joke all the time that you know I was pretty flat chested so I'm lucky that there's not such a thing as like butt cancer because I lost the boob. But if I lost the butt I'd be way more upset than this. So. <laughs> <laughs> Not butt cancer. <laughs> Not butt cancer.
So the results are in and bitch. First off, let me talk about the process. I polled everyone who follows me on Instagram. I can't really tell because of Instagram's back end. It really doesn't tell me how many people answered my questions, but I know for sure that 10% of my followers at least watched my story, which is mazel. And the first pose with the t-shirt, the most popular was the pepper bra. Second most popular, was the bralette. The least popular was the push-up bra. This may not be a viewpoint that's widely held, but if I'm wearing a t-shirt, typically I'm like, oh, gotta whip out my push-up bra. So that was interesting. And in the tube top version, the most popular was actually the push-up, which is funny because I would never wear a push-up bra with a tube top. The second most popular is silver metal goes to pepper bra. Ooh, pepper bras are just like truly hitting it out of the park. And then the least popular is the bralette. Okay, so I've had some time to kind of process this imperfect experiment and I decided to end this video out sitting with my bras since I mean this is where the magic happened but what did this experiment actually teach me nothing <laughs> probably truly 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 nothing but hear me out I sort of expected my audience to gravitate to the bralette look just because I thought, hey, we're all gals here, we're all hanging loose, but that was not the case. In conducting this experiment, I realized that I had a hard decision to make. Do I draw attention to the fact that my breasts look different in each look and risk my stories not being widely circulated, or do I keep it kind of a secret and let my audience guess. I decided to go with the latter because I wanted to get as many answers as possible. As it stood, I had 10% of my audience checking out my stories, which is not the case when I post poll content. I'm lucky if I get 5% of my audience looking at my stories when I post poll content. I simply couldn't ask how much boob do you prefer on each look? So let's answer the initial question and the title of this video. Has the internet changed the way I think about breasts? My breasts and other breasts? No. Not really. They still very much feel like a part of the body that can be censored offline and online. And I wish we could change that. Thanks again to ThreadUp for sponsoring this video and providing me with so many looks for my experiment. Check out their styles for yourself and click on the link in the description box below. But be sure to use my code DEVIN at checkout for 30% off your first order. Thank you, beautiful nerds. Thanks for talking about teats with me. And I'll see you next week.